Hey everybody, my name is Seth. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the Mars Through the Signs series. Um, this is going to be an abridged version of Mars Through Cancer and what it looks like when you see Mars in each decan of Cancer and how to interpret that utilizing uh, the tarot, the Crowley deck specifically. Um, it's fun. I'm liking it. I'm liking the progress through this series. We're introducing uh, now some layers to everything because we have the second uh, cardinal sign within the zodiac. We are leading into the second uh, fire sign in the zodiac where we're getting out of the primal energy and moving into more in-depth, sophisticated energies and it's getting interesting and, and the storyline uh, is getting more in-depth, the plot thickens and I'm excited about it and hopefully you guys are too. So enjoy this abridged version, and if you would like to see more, you can hop over to patreon.com slash cancerogoastrology and watch there. Hey everybody, welcome back to my Mars Through the Signs series. We're moving right along to Mars and Cancer today. Now, where we last left off was Mars and Gemini, of course, and what we really hit on were themes of the muse and of um, channeling and being inspired. And with uh, Cancer, we kind of see the deflation of that kind of fantastical nature that a uh, Gemini type energy likes to create, that um, spirituality likes to allude to in a lot of uh, ways. But the idea of emotion, that, that muse that was visiting Gemini, that was taking over the, the things that need to be channeled and brought out into the world through Gemini, really comes down to emotion. <laughs> what Gemini really tries to avoid, what all air signs really try to avoid in their own sense. And that's what it all comes down to. At least for Gemini, this is what it is coming down to. Mars is a planet of projection. That's really the biggest keyword if you want to put one on Mars. And it's a planet that deals with the consequences of projection, whether they're negative or positive, for better or for worse. And there are multiple things that can be projected by Mars. Um, one of those things may be passion. You can see that with um, Mars projecting things like sex and also projecting things like violence. Um, you can see something like power. So you could see Mars projecting something like uh, war. Or you can see Mars projecting something like uh, aggressive peacekeeping treaties or peacekeeping strategies. Those are projections of power as well. That's really what it's all about. The, the outward projection of something, of anything, to be able to affect what's going on around you. That's what Mars is all about, or what's going on around itself, for better or for worse. Um, the idea of advancement, to win, to propagate, to, to conquer, to progress. We have to answer the questions, um, to advance at what? To win what? To propagate where and why? It, it, we create the context, we create the motivation, we are um, the builders in that sense. It is a collaboration between ourselves and Mars at that point. Mars's influence on us is how we create uh, the context for Mars's purpose overall. So this is the tower. This is the card um, associated with Mars in the tarot. And this card is really a, so now we can actually talk about Cancer. And Cancer in the tarot is represented by this card right here. Oh, let's see, ah, the chariot. And with this card, uh, it casts Cancer in a whole new light. With this card, you see the eternal competitor. You, you see Cancer as the energy that is totally ready, totally willing to wake up every single day at a brand new starting line. They're ready to tackle a new thing every single day. This works extremely well with the tower. You find Cancer is tenacious and it's driven and it's focused and it, it, it's competitive. Competitive to a point that you should not underestimate how competitive cancer can be and what they're actually willing to do to win. And it doesn't mean like uh, 
backstabbing or being unfair or anything like that but you just never know what skills cancer is sitting on or what um energy or what they're holding on inside of to to release to get that extra boost to be able to win cancer is a winner and that's really what this card is about the winner they're going to find a way to win no matter when you throw them at the starting line they're gonna reach the finish and they're gonna try their fucking hardest to get there first so this is definitely a, a totally new <laughs> interpretation of cancer but we'll get to why that is and why that matters what we're seeing is a square we're, we're seeing the the big transition between aries to cancer squares when you have two um signs of the same quality right so you have cardinal aries and we're now reaching the point where we introduce the next cardinal sign and that's cardinal cancer the internal battles that aries had to go through when it this is not cancer through the eyes of mars that i'm describing this is not cancer through the eyes of saturn this is not cancer through the eyes of the sun like when someone has their sun in cancer that's not what cancer is about it's what the sun decides cancer is about through this the lens of the sun when you have your jupiter and cancer that does not describe what cancer is about it describes jupiter's perspective of cancer because it's traveling through there lastly what we need to do is introduce the decans what they are and why they matter the decans are the uh, dissection of each and every sign uh three ways you know that each sign is 30 degrees of the 360 degree wheel that's why our chart is a circle um at least westernized placidus all that good shit and each sign is 30 degrees of that circle you break those 30 degrees up three ways and you get the decans 30 degrees here right from zero to nine degrees you have the first decan of any sign from 10 to 19 degrees you have the second decan of any sign so from 20 to 29 degrees or 30 degrees of that sign uh you have the third decan any sign so we're going to be going through those three decans zero to nine ten to nineteen uh twenty to twenty nine of cancer and mars through those three decades of cancer it is important because it shows us that the signs do not just go on and off like a light switch you don't hit zero degrees cancer and suddenly gemini doesn't matter we're in cancer now it's a whole new story um there are influences the the signs are fluid and the decans show just how fluid and how to measure the fluidity of the transitions between signs so the first decan of cancer is represented by this card right here and it is the two of cups it's called love in the crowley deck and which i am using the crowley deck i did not mention that's why you're not seeing a traditional imagery here it's the idea that emotions are now involved in competition this isn't cutthroat aries or cutthroat libra this is competition with some emotion behind it there's gratitude for the opportunity to race at all cancer is the introduction of wisdom in astrology and that wisdom comes from understanding that this is all just a game at the end of the day you may be my rival but i respect you for that i'm not gonna hate you because you drive me to work harder you understand them as integral parts to you being able to have a purpose in life at all cancer loves its rivals cancer loves the camaraderie of being in a competition and being in a race and of course it does want to win cancer's still a winner <laughs> like you know what i mean don't think that they're gonna lose for you but the idea is that there there is wisdom now being bred into into cancer through understanding that even though you're my competitor you're the only one that understands what's happening here uh, all these spectators and all these people that put this all together the three of cups and what you see up here is the glyph for mercury and down here is the glyph for cancer that's what happens with the second decade of any sign there's a progress there's there's um an inherent progression so if you have mars in the second decade it is already thought that you have absorbed the lessons of the first decade and that you're you're ready to move on you have an, an, an innate wisdom considering uh that first decade when the race is over this is how you can see the why 
cancer attaches so much to these other people, why they consider them to be family. Because this is the, the distress moment. This is when you go out to a bar and you drink and you laugh and you talk and you express and you let go and you really utilize why you have a family to begin with. Yes, they understand you. But so we're at the third deck and the last deck in a cancer and it is represented by this card right here, the four of cups. And this card is called luxury and three of cups is called abundance. I, I don't think I said that. The race is over and you've built your community and you've won so many races and you've run so many titles that you may not have noticed that you are starting to outrank the people around you. You're starting to outrank your environment. You're starting to outrank this business. You're starting to run races and finding that you are the only competent one left or accepting that this community is no longer the right space for you. You have outgrown it. Accepting this business is no longer the right space for you, that this um, town, this relationship, sometimes unfortunately, um, these connections, these races that you are running, that's natural. It's a natural progression. Um, you're not supposed to be happy all the time. You're not supposed to be sad all the time. You're not supposed to be angry all the time. You're supposed to be fluid and relationships are just as fluid and situations are just as fluid. Life is just as fluid. You can't keep playing the same board game all day. You need to switch it up. Life needs variety. Life needs spice. This is what we're, we're going to conclude on. Switch up the board games. Life needs spice. Try different races. Try different competitors. Try different things. Really push yourself in different ways and just try to find the variety. Find maybe what you do best. Find where, where, what races um, are you winning the most compared to the ones that you are really struggling with? Where can you better yourself, lead with your strengths and, and learn to accept and mold and grow in directions that actually suit you and find the patience to evolve beyond what you feel and start actually trying to create something outside of yourself, a name for yourself, maybe a legacy, maybe a heritage, maybe something like Leo, <laughs> something that Leo does it, it, the idea of building up creating spice, throwing in some fire. All right, thank you guys so much for watching this abridged version of Mars Through Cancer and my Mars Through the Signs series. Um, if you guys wanna talk with me, you can hop onto Instagram, you can hop onto Twitter, you can go on to Facebook and use the hashtag Mars Through the Signs. I'm gonna be checking that hashtag. If you guys wanna use that to contact me, you can always leave a comment down below and I'll try to talk to you there. If you want to maybe start putting your hands on how this series is going, if you have any um, request for maybe an area that you'd like me to start focusing on or what you'd like to see change or just your opinions, you can always become a patron on patreon.com and give me your feedback there. My patrons get to have a lot more influence over how I do things because they're the ones who are showing me that they're dedicated to the work that I'm giving. Um, I really love your commitment here on YouTube. I love your subscriptions. I love your comments. I love your likes. I love your shares. Um, and I just, I want to make this more of a community. I want to make this more of a cooperative adventure. I am a Libra Mars at heart, and uh, I enjoy that. <laughs> so hopefully you guys do too, and um, continue to engage. Um, thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned, because you never know what I'll be talking about next. <laughs>